Nikki Chavanel joining us every Tuesday around now, managing editor of Hogbeat, part of the Rivals Network, covering all things Arkansas athletics. Uh, good morning, Nikki. We're uh, we're all fired up for a baseball schedule to show up right now. And yeah. Any minute it should be here. And boy, you can get the sense with uh, uh, football season ending and and the way that it ended, and you know, bowl game being canceled and everything. Basketball's had a tough week. Uh, everybody wants the optimism of what they hope baseball season will be like. Oh, yeah. I mean, I hope you guys don't quiz me on it, but uh, uh, I know that uh, Hutch is ready for baseball, and I'm going to be definitely tuned in a lot. I know they're ranked pretty highly by D1 Baseball, at least, so far. So, uh, yeah, I'm excited. Hutch put out his uh, roster analysis the other day, so you can go check that out. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm I'm here for the analysis on, on on baseball. Don't worry about that. We'll ask you the football questions, and um, uh, obviously the big news in in college football uh, does involve uh, potentially maybe opportunities for Arkansas to uh, pilfer some recruits that Tennessee's going after. Because, in all honesty, if I'm a recruit and I've got a chance to play in the SEC right now, and Tennessee was coming after me, I might be looking at other schools. Because I think that volunteer program is about to get hit really, really hard. So is Arkansas going after any of those recruits? So obviously the the 2021 class is mostly done. Um, Tennessee already signed their guys, but they are um, already on Tennessee's one uh, 2022 commit. He is a uh, defensive end from New York, actually. Um, a three-star uh, committed to Tennessee in August. And, um, yeah, they're going to already do a virtual visit with him, and I don't think they had had too much communication before, uh, you know, Coach Pruitt was put on the rocks there. So, um, yeah, they're already after that. And then, you know, super strange situation as well. Obviously, Big Cat Bryant, like one of the top defensive um tackle prospects in the transfer portal he picked tennessee just days before uh jeremy pruitt was fired and the coach that he stated was the reason he was going to tennessee uh shelton felton i think is his name um he was also one of the coaches fired so um big cat bryant might be back on the market i'm not sure maybe he already signed paperwork and he's stuck until he gets released or something but um that could be interesting because hmm. everyone wants that guy. This is going to destroy Tennessee's, I mean, a, a program overall. I know I mean, you, you build it back from whatever it is, but the entire recruiting department, it seems like, or at least four or five of them were, were fired. What did you what, what did you just read me before before the segment started, SmackDown, the reports from the Dan Patrick show? Yeah, Dan Nikki, Patrick. Listen, listen to this. <laughs> so the Dan Patrick show, uh, it just in a tweet that came across, Tennessee recruits allegedly received money and get it, McDonald's bags during school visits. McDonald's bags. They were getting, wha- I almost said it again. Dead gummit. I almost said Whoppers again. You almost said McWhoppers. McWhoppers again. That, that, that's a whole new idea of a Happy Meal, isn't it? <clears throat> um, yes. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's the SEC. It's not surprising that allegations like this surface, especially when the school itself goes after the coach saying that he committed violations. So it's like, well, yeah, someone at this point, like Dan Patrick, you know, he's not always spot on um, from what I've seen, but, like, he has no reason to not share. He's not affiliated with Tennessee in any way. He has the freedom to do that. It's not like Tennessee recruiting writers are going to start sharing stuff that they've heard. Uh, That's just not really what happened. So I don't know. Dan Patrick might be one of the guys that would actually be in in a position to say something and give us some truth. So that is absolutely crazy. There's a uh, story from 2013 of a Tennessee couple who went to a McDonald's and got a bag full of cash. They returned to the McDonald's who said that they were uh, supposed to be depositing it at a bank, but it's back in 2013. So who knows? Maybe uh, it's been a longstanding tradition for them. That's just, I just love the image of of, uh, of a McDonald's bag filled with cash, and I've heard other you know recruiting stories that involve McDonald's. Heck, I mean, Dave Van Horn committed to Arkansas baseball at a McDonald's in Texas, although I don't think it involved thousands of dollars of uh, of cash at all. Um, all right, so 
let, let's let's switch over to just some some stuff involving Arkansas and people that we do know are going to be Razorbacks. Uh, they got some uh, preferred walk-on signees uh, over the last few days. Tell us about them. Yeah, so I'll start with um, Logan Moss because he actually won't join the team right away. He is going to um, gray shirt probably because of their um, just numbers at the linebacker position. Um, they just like to keep it even across the board. So he'll gray shirt and just be a student for one year, uh, and then he'll play. He's from uh, DeWitt High School, which is where Dax Courtney, the uh, 2022 um, Arkansas commit tight end. Um, he's from DeWitt. His dad is the head coach there, although I think the Courtney's might be moving and might be going to play with Quincy McAdoo over at Clarendon. So uh, we'll see. I talked to Dax in about a week uh, now. He, they have a big event with a lot of the in-state talent there, so uh, stay tuned for reports from that event. But um, So Logan, his linebacker, uh, very active. Uh, 94 tackles for DeWitt, which didn't have a great season, but um, overall, a good prospect to get on. He also has a younger brother who is looking like one of the top in-state offensive linemen in the 2023 class. So that would be nice for the Razorbacks to get a little connection there. Um, and then they also got Jordan Hanna, a linebacker from Greenwood High School, also incredibly productive, uh, had like 14 tackles for loss or something. Um, he is the younger brother of Morgan Hanna, who is a defensive end already on campus, although he hasn't played yet. Nikki Chavanel joining us here on Halftime. Nikki, got a few more recruiting tidbits want to get your opinion on or get your thoughts on, excuse me. Uh, one of those being a, another offer for this Razorback team, uh, Chris McClellan. What can you tell us about uh, Chris uh, uh, coming out of the 2022 class from Tulsa, Oklahoma, the defensive end? Um, you know, they just offered like 19 okay. guys in the past week. So I couldn't off the top of my head, give you details on that one, but yeah, they're, they're recruiting heavily in Oklahoma. Um, and it's, it seems like 2022 is a very solid year for them, which is going to end up with Arkansas likely having, you know, probably four or five mm -hmm. from Oklahoma this year. One of the same amount this year, right? I mean, yeah. weren't there more recruits from Oklahoma than than most other states, if not all the other states? Um, just about. Yeah, they had, I think, one, two, three, at least four, if not five. I might be missing one. Um, but it was, yeah, it was a really solid one. Um, and I think the earlier that they get in on them, the better it will be. Because then, um, you know, Oklahoma and Oklahoma State, even if they offer late, Arkansas might be able to beat them out. One of the other key players I wanted to ask you about, too, and you just you tweeted about this just right before we got you on. You can follow Nikki on Twitter at, at Nikki Chavanel. Uh, Razorbacks have a nice tie-in with one of the young defensive backs coming out of Georgia, Kay and Lee. Uh, is there a good chance that he could end up being a Razorback from the 2023 class? Well, he is obviously also being recruited by Georgia. So there is always a chance that he just decides to go uh, with, you know, the in-state Bulldogs, but playing at Cedar Grove, that is where uh, Jimmy Smith used to be the uh, head coach. He's a running back coach at Arkansas. Uh, he won multiple state championships there. So he always has a good chance with anyone from that um, high school. Um, and he's looking like one of the one of the top kids in the nation pretty early. Um, but he was kind of small, 5'11", 160. So we'll continue to watch him as he grows. Real quick, just your thoughts on Razorback basketball. Obviously, we're coming off the loss. We haven't really touched. We've touched on what we've needed to, but obviously it's just it's not a good situation when you look at what's going on right now. In your estimation, though, it is a huge game inside Bud Walton Arena when they take on the Auburn Tigers. I'm sure you'd agree Razorbacks need to get a win to try to – I don't know if it's – we talked about this yesterday. I don't know if it's more confidence level that they need to get up or just the effort level that they need to get up. One way or another, though, they got to come out with a W tomorrow night. I think uh, the confidence is the bigger issue because we have seen them, you know, against Tennessee, they performed um, at a high level, um, but they need consistency and the confidence. But I just hope that this game, it, it is really important. Uh, there's no doubt they're going to lose some fans if they play badly against Auburn at home. Um, so they need to not make this game bigger than it needs to be in their own heads, but also at the same time play like, 
it is the only game that matters at this point. Play really hard. Uh, Nikki, uh, let, I'll let you go with one last thought here. It is National Popcorn Day. Do you do the flavored salt or just regular salt and butter on your movie popcorn when we get to go back to the movies again? Um, I usually just do uh, the butter, the extra butter, because it's always, always really salty already. All right. All right. Very good. I uh, appreciate your time, Nikki. Thank you. And uh, looking forward to talking again next week. Thanks, Nikki. Thanks, guys.